So you've got your new iPad, you're ready to start making the most of it. But I'd second guess deleting those apps you see when you first load up the iPad. Whether you got the new iPad Air that launched last month or any iPad in general, it came with this suite of apps. Books allows you to read and listen to audiobooks. Pages is a word processor that lets you create documents and templates. Numbers for spreadsheets and data calculation. Keynote for creating and delivering presentations. And iMovie for, you guessed it, editing movie projects. I'm focusing on these five apps today because I found that they are the apps people tend to delete once they dig into their brand new iPad. However, these apps offer a lot of functionality and a seamless experience on the iPad, but also other iOS devices like Mac or iPhone. They are offered as default apps on these devices and they are completely free to use. Now you can take each of these apps at face value. Keynote is for creating presentations. I'm not creating or don't need to deliver presentations, so why should I keep this app that won't be put to use? But these apps are simply a blank slate. And you're ultimately in control of how you use these apps to get creative and make something big of it. So for example, Keynote. Yes, at face value is a presentation app, I can open up this app, start building my presentation from themes or from scratch. And if you're a student, I strongly encourage you to use Keynote as your presentation software. It's entirely free and already on your device, but you can also use it over the cloud. And you have a lot of creative freedom in this application. Plus, if you're already using the iPad for note-taking, it can double as a way of creating a presentation and delivering one with speaker notes. But I see Keynote as a moneymaker for me. I use Keynote to create and design things like digital planners, templates, inserts, digital stickers even, a huge range of digital products that not only improve my own productivity, but I've also been able to make a living from as well. And it all started with giving a real attempt at seeing what I can do with it beyond what it's being advertised for, which is presentations. If you're a student, you can pop into Keynote very quickly and create note-taking templates for your classes. If you're a teacher, you can use it to create worksheets. If you're a freelancer, you can use it to create an onboarding package. There's just so much you can do with it when it comes to customizing in Keynote, and it's leagues easier to use than similar presentation apps that I've tried. It really does offer the best experience on your iPad and is much more pleasing to me to create in Keynote with the Apple Pencil. Similarly, we have Pages, which again at face value is your basic word processor. You can use it to type up papers and reports. I've used Pages for the latter half of my college career, especially since I was becoming more of an iPad focused student for the same reasons I started using Keynote. It is a better experience since it's integrated directly on the device and there's no weird margin or download issues like you get with the cloud-based or web-based processors like Google, but you're still able to export the more popular file types as well, so you'll have no issue with collaboration. However, like with Keynote, there's more than what meets the eye here in Pages because you can create essentially the same stuff. Beautiful templates and worksheets, Pages even has a ton of themes for things like resumes and brochures. I find a lot of the default templates in Pages also more modern and more in touch with the current climate and working style, while other processors seem to be stuck in the early 2000s way of template design and style. It's also already there and offered to you without having to research and download sometimes costly or subscription-based processors iMovie. I know so many iPad users are still hoping for some version or a level of Final Cut Pro to hit the iPad, and I am in the same boat as well, but Final Cut was introduced to the Mac first for a reason. It's certainly more advanced, offers more control and customization, but with that often more time and more research or skill into making the most of that program. iMovie, however, is incredibly simple and easy to use. In fact, it's even easier to use with or without video editing experience 
with their new features that was first announced in last month's keynote, Magic Movie and Storyboards, which you can use starting today by updating iMovie on your compatible devices. Magic Movie is great for beginner and advanced video editors alike because you can easily select the clips that you want to use and it creates it with the touch of a button. Of course, you can go in and do a bit of fine tuning if you wish. And a feature like this is something that is going to save me so much time, especially for creating reels and TikToks. Storyboards is a really unique feature in that it guides you through a shot list of things you want to consider for different movie templates. Things like product review or science experiment even. I script, film, and edit videos all day in hopes of telling you a really engaging story or showing you how to do something. But some of that storytelling can get lost over time once you get in the flow of things. Let's script this, plan out some ideas of the shots we need, toss it together while editing, and post it. But something like storyboards, even if you are a more advanced content creator, can help guide you in prioritizing the story in camera before trying to throw a story together in post. Planning out how you want to frame the story before you start enhancing that story through the editing process. With this update, I highly encourage you to give it a good amount of time to see if iMovie is a good fit for your editing experience, especially for short form content like TikTok. Since it is free, already comes on your device, and there's no micro transactions for things like filters. I also wanted to add that Magic Movie feature is definitely better fine-tuned than other video editors I've tried that offer a similar feature. Books is pretty straightforward. It allows you to purchase books or audiobooks to read. I think more people will be tempted to give this a pass over some of the other apps I'm talking about today because you might have a dedicated Kindle for reading or apps like Libby which allow you to borrow books with a library card. But again, Books has more under the hood that we can leverage. So first, Books does offer free books. I hate spending so much money on books and it only seems like they are getting more expensive. And if you read a lot, buying books can really eat into your budget. Which is why I'm also taking advantage of how I can get my hands on books for free. And there are a number of free books in the Books app, plus some for kids as well, which can be great for making the most of your iPad as a learning tool. But you can also import your own files and templates into books, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a book. This is great if you find a PDF of your textbook or you're reading a book online, but it can also be used to sign and annotate documents. You can use it like a note-taking or digital planning app as well. So let's say you have a PDF planner with hyperlinks, Import that into books and you can use it like a PDF markup or note-taking app and it's free. I can click through the hyperlinks in my digital planners or journals and use my Apple Pencil to write out my to-do list or take notes. It's a very basic experience, but for a lot of people that could be all you need. And then the last app on my list of ones you should second guess deleting is Numbers. Numbers at its core is a spreadsheet processor. You can use it as you would normally use a spreadsheet for data collection and calculation, budgeting, and your own work or school assignments, obviously. But again, Numbers offers that unique and seamless experience that plays nicely with different file formats that you might need to export in. Now, to be fair, I personally use Numbers like I would any old spreadsheet. I've used it to refer to calculations for my CPA and to review my finances. But I've also used it throughout my time as a college chemistry student for data collection and calculation, all from my iPad, which was great, especially with how portable the iPad is and how dangerous it was sometimes to have our laptops and computers out on our lab benches. But you know, there's obviously some really unique and creative ways that you can use Numbers. What I love about Numbers is the infinite free canvas space. I can place anything I want anywhere, doesn't need to be confined to a cell, which means you can create unique worksheets and templates in Numbers as well. This is great if you don't wanna fiddle with table tools and Word or presentation processors, and you can hide or blend the borders of those cells to make it look like all one canvas. So there's a lot of potential there as well, especially with being able to import pictures and videos in those spreadsheets too. I think students and educators especially will appreciate numbers for things like 
interactive timelines and activities. Specifically, if you have one of those huge smart boards where students can come up and interact with the content. And as a student or just someone learning a new skill entirely, you can use numbers as a way to create study tools or resources that are interactive and help you retain that information or practice what you're learning. Had I taken the time to maximize the potential of numbers, I would have had a much easier time with learning languages, especially since a really useful byproduct of being creative with numbers is a conjugation table or, you know, whatever you want numbers to be. It's clear that there are a tremendous number of ways to get creative with these applications and take them several levels beyond what they're originally intended for. They are also free and already accessible on your iPad, taking the work and space out of researching millions of different apps that each cover a very specific and niche thing you want to do. When a lot of these default apps that are coming on your iPad already are multifunctional, as well as money that other apps and programs might require, things like subscriptions or microtransactions to unlock more features. If you found this video helpful, then you'll love my other videos, so I encourage you to subscribe and pop over to another video like my how to make a digital planner tutorial. I, of course, use Keynote in that tutorial and walk you through all of the steps so you can start maximizing the potential of these default apps right now. I'll catch you over there. Bye.